Hello, viewers, and welcome to the latest GI Huddle. I'm with Guga, CEO of SmartSoft Gaming. Guga, thanks for joining us, and how are you? Thanks for having me, team. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, really good. Um, based out of London, uh, you are in uh, in Georgia, I believe. Um, I mean, what's it like over there? We're based in Tbilisi. It's getting warmer. The spring is starting, so the weather is pretty nice. It's good to hear. We're not so lucky in London, but <laughs> you know, I think we'll we will get a bit of heat in the summer. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're here to talk to you today about kind of your role, SmartSoft in general. Uh, to start off with, could you kind of walk us through your, your career? I, I see you've got a lot of experience in banking. How has that kind of prepared you for being CEO at, at SmartSoft? Yeah, sure. I have a uh, business education and then I did a brief stint in construction, but on the finance side, then I moved to banking and corporate banking and I was covering mainly different industries. I think banking gives a, uh, it's very fast paced. It gives you a lot of insight in different businesses, how things work and you analyze their strategies and work with the shareholders and the management team. So I think it was a good basically preparation for the role of the CEO at SmartSoft. Mm -hmm. And I've been here for around two, almost two years now. Mm -hmm. Cool, so two years in, as you say, um, can yeah. you walk us through your your day to day role as CEO? Kind of what what does it involve? What what are you in charge of? Um, you know, apart from the company. <laughs> of course, we um I'm uh, besides running the daily operations, um, I work a lot on the strategy, on the long term vision of the company. Um, what what are the priorities? Where should we? Which market should we enter? How should we develop our product? So on and so forth. So it's like in many directions, mainly strategy and priorities for the company and short-term and long-term goals, of course, along with the man, of course, on the daily basis, working with the management team. Mm -hmm. Sure. And can you tell us uh, a little bit more about the company itself? So obviously, uh, you know, a, a game studio, but very much a focus on kind of non-traditional games and, and such as you've got an, a JetX product, I'm sure you want to talk about. Yeah, SmartSoft is the pioneer in one of the first companies that's really started pushing this non-traditional games category. These are basically games that you wouldn't uh, uh, relate to casinos, but are just regular games that you would gamble on. And we see a huge opportunity there as the uh, video games are one of the biggest uh, sub uh, sectors of entertainment industry so we kind of saw that opportunity that you can make bridge eye gaming and gaming and kind of bring all, a lot of audiences that play video games and would like to gamble to to traditional casinos we of course we didn't invent this the type of games and there were certain ideas but usually they were very niche products and casinos had their as own mini games we were the first ones who added a lot of gamification elements and saw the opportunity of scaling them. Mm -hmm. And currently we have unique content. Uh, we focus a lot on the innovation, on the quality of the product. And we basically what, what we strive for is to push the limits of iGaming. Sure. You, you mentioned the huge opportunity of kind of that, that uh, I'm not sure if we should call it a mini segment or you know a segment within within casino games. How much potential in this area is there in terms of kind of market size and, and getting these games out there? The, the size of the video games market is like 130 billion. And we see people gamble on a lot of stuff. They gamble on crypto, they gamble on stock market. So there's this innate, uh, uh, how to say, desire to uh, take cer certain risks and be a winner. And also we see a lot of interest in video games. So our vision is that we can bring a lot of elements from traditional video, video games to the iGaming space. And this will enable operators to bring in a lot of new audiences that were not previously part of, um, mm -hmm. playing the, um, casino players, so to say. Sure. Um, I briefly asked you about Georgia earlier. I was just you know, talking about the weather and, and things like that. But on a, from a business perspective, what's it like operating out of Tbilisi? It's great, actually. Uh, Georgia has a, uh, in online, it's very well-developed country. We started pretty early. So there's a lot of know-how around here. And we've been doing this business for, we've been in iGaming. Our team has an experience in iGaming for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. 
So they started out with land bed shop software, and then we did um, sports book and stuff. So there's a lot of know-how in the country. The tax system is great. It's very easy to do business here. Banking is great. So um, you can find really good talent for a very competitive compensation. So I would say it's one of the um, unexplored gems of doing business. Really small country and really nice. But we see a lot of people coming in lately. Hmm, fantastic. Which wasn't the case before. Yeah. Yeah. So we've we've talked about the kind of the opportunities and potential, uh, but yeah. obviously that there's there's a lot of competing game studios. You know, it's a it's a competitive sure. market. What are the biggest challenges uh, game studios such as yourself are facing at the moment? Yeah, sure. We were as as said, we were one of the first ones who pushed this segment and who were so we had two challenges basically, right? You mm -hmm. want to uh, expand. At the same time, uh, expanding with a known product to the market is much easier. But in our case, we were pushing the product that was unknown and there was a lot of skepticism. Yeah. So I think our strong point is that we always try for innovation. We do very unique content and basically compared to other uh, providers who do mainly iterations of the existing content, we do a lot of innovative stuff. And we're happy about it because we see then a lot of people doing the same kind of stuff. And we, we see ourselves as setting the trend in many uh, uh, in, in this segment and in many subcategories of this mm -hmm. type of games. And of course, as, the, as, this, uh, as this category is getting a lot of traction and popularity around the world, a lot of people are jumping on the opportunity. And so we see a lot of companies entering this space, mm -hmm. well-established, pragmatic, play tech. They, they, they've done you know, this type of games and as well, uh, like smaller studios as well. But yeah. at the same time, we see that we see a lot of people entering this market and we already see some uh, some companies exiting because mm -hmm. uh, there is a misconception that these games are simple everyone can do them and i agree everyone can do them if it's for a very small number of players everyone can do them for 1500 players but if you want to do it for 10,000 concurrent players then it's super complicated so what we see is that very few companies can scale mm -hmm and can achieve success and if you don't have a unique content and if you have just one game which you which is more more of an imitation of the existing content then uh, there is not much opportunity for you so to return to your question basically the big challenge currently we face is that a lot of people are entering this segment and we have to educate a lot of operators about the product why is it why is our content good why is it good and basically at the same time be always on the forefront of innovation to mm -hmm. never lose our edge and be interesting provider for most of the operators sure um, you mentioned scale and growth uh, a last sort of couple of questions from me related to, to that topic because i want to ask you about your your future goals uh starting with the, the rest of 2023 you know, what's coming out for SmartSoft in terms of maybe market launches, products, partnerships, that kind of thing? Uh, we are expanding pretty fast. So uh, in 2022, uh, we doubled the size of the company. This year, we were planning to triple the size of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the good trend that we see is our non-traditional segment is growing at a, a triple digit pace, which is great. Um, but we are entering many continent. We're expanding very aggressively in Latin, in Africa, in Western and Eastern Europe. In, so all over the world, basically. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of potential in the emerging markets currently. Yeah. And they were the ones who uh, saw the opportunity much earlier uh, and believe in that, uh, be, believe in this type of game. So they're pushing and marketing them quite a lot. So we see huge growth there. And of course, we uh, we uh, besides expanding with our current portfolio, we very much so our, our strength is the team. We're very as said, our, we're very strong on the technical side and have huge experience. Our art and design team is top notch, and they good they do really good. So we always focus on player and our partner journey, 
and to try to uh, create the best experience for them. So in non-traditional, we cur non-traditional games category, we currently have around 10 games and we're planning to release 10 more this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a, a final word for you is longer term, you know, CEO of the company, what's, if you could maybe pick out one sort of target or goal, you know, what would you really like to see the company achieve and, and, and do? We want to remain the leader of non-traditional uh, casino games, leading provider in that segment. And we want to uh, do a lot of new and good stuff and expand our current portfolio uh, as much as possible all around the globe. Mm -hmm. Hugo, thanks very much for your time. Uh, really interested to, to, to hear more about SmartSoft and, and good luck for the, for the rest of the year. Thanks a lot, team.